So the video we are responding to today is titled Evidence for the Atheist, Proof from Nature by Rob Warren, uploaded to a channel by said name. I've done a lot of heavy stuff recently so I want to sign a little shorter and hopefully a little lighter, and this video seemed to be a good one, so with that noted, let's get to it. Hi, my name is Ron Warren, and I'm, I, I am an ex-atheist, and I got two questions that an atheist has, has to answer, and when I, allow me to give you the groundwork first, okay? Well, I nor any other atheist has to answer anything. This seems like a really weird way to start a video, but from the title I'm getting the impression that you're about to present a couple of apparent gotcha questions. I say apparent because there's no question in existence that, if I fail to answer, would then demonstrate the existence of God. At most my failure to answer a question shows that I don't know and possibly nobody knows, but that's really it. However, I'll continue to see where you're taking things as I could be entirely wrong. Number one, we can see God through the evidence of biology. You know, the universe was perfectly designed for supporting intelligent life forms. And the Earth it has a great number of complex organisms that defy any naturalistic ex explanation. It contains over 11 million different species, each one representing an amazing design of engineering and life. Every intelligent design shows that there is an existence of a designer. The greater the design, the greater the designer. The complex structure of the universe declares that there has to be a great architect. And when we speak of Mother Nature, we refer to a great intelligence beyond and behind that nature. I want you to consider a following biological evidence, okay? You claim all of this defies naturalistic explanation. Fact is, that's not true. Now I get that you're about to go on to some specific examples, but you've already thrown out several claims and asserted them without any basis. For a start we have you claiming that the Earth has over 11 million species. Now I don't know where you're getting that number from, but it really doesn't matter. What matters is that this is thrown out as if it defies naturalistic explanation. Okay, well, let's test that. Is there a verified scientific theory? Is there such a theory that specifically accounts for the origin of species? Now if you didn't get the subtle hint I dropped in there at the end, yes there is. Evolution via natural selection not only explains the great variety of life, but also how seemingly complex systems developed gradually. Now I say seemingly complex as said term is highly subjective, and until you define what a unit of complexity is, will remain such and is thus not applicable to science and what it shows. So this string of assertion doesn't hold any sort of merit. But let's see what else you have. Let's talk a little bit about the human brain. The brain weighs about three pounds, and yet it can do things that no massive supercomputer can do. It has up to 15 billion neutrons, and each one of those is a living unit within itself. It has over 100 trillion. Now, I'm going to tell you, that is the 10 to the 14th power. It's electrical connections. And this is more than all of the electrical connections that it in, in all of the electrical appliances in the world. And each cubic inch of the brain contains a minimum of one, 100 million nerve cells and are interconnected by 10,000 miles of fibers to other nerve cells in the brain. Now, because of this vast number of unique connections, to assemble an object resembling the human brain would have taken an eternity even to start to applying the most sophisticated engineering techniques. <laughs> yeah, but can it connect to satellites in orbit to transfer data around the globe near instantaneously? No. Well, it seems rather simplistic when you put it that way. Fact is, there are a vast number of capabilities computers already have that our brains lack the capacity for. Meanwhile, computers are fast catching up with our own capabilities. Then there's the many issues with the brain such as mental errors, whether it be mental ailments such as psychopathology, or simple logical fallacies and phenomena such as pareidolia, a phenomena where the mind responds to random data as if there was a pattern present. The human mind is heavily flawed. 
It's the best we have since it's a result of a naturalistic process simply selecting for survival, but there's certainly room for improvement which opens up the field of psychological transhumanism, literally melding mind with computer to improve our capabilities. With that in mind, here comes one of the questions. As an atheist or an agnostic, could this design or engineering be occurred by accident? And if so, where's your evidence? You have this completely backwards. You've yet to show either design or engineering, so in order for your question to have merit, I need you to supply evidence of such design or engineering. And by this, I mean more than simply look at this random fact about the brain. I mean you need to actually identify the features of design and demonstrate them in the brain. Returning to your notion of complexity, you need to first give us a way to measure complexity, as well as demonstrate how complexity can only arise from design. Until you've done that, all you've attempted to do is shift the burden of proof from where it rightfully belongs, on you and your claims, onto the person waiting for you to supply evidence or said claims. That's just not right. Let's take a look at something else. When you add this to the complexity of the men's, of the brain, the man's brain is completely different than the woman's. At conception, the male sperm determines the, the, the sex of the child. The woman's egg will always be an X chromosome. And if the male sperm is also an X chromosome, that child will be a girl. But if it has the Y chromosome, that child will be a male. You can change the exterior in a number of ways. You can do it from weightlifting to tattoos, or you can do it by the so-called gender reassignment th surgery. But here's the problem. Your brain will always be the brain prepared for you at the beginning of your formation. You cannot change the formation of how your brain was designed. This is just not true on so many levels. First of all, the brains do not differ at large. A study titled Sex Beyond the Genitalia, the Human Brain Mosaic, which was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the United States of America, looked into the matter. What they found was that no matter how they drew various lines such as grey matter density and overall size, only 6% of brains were quote, internally consistent. The idea of a strict or even decent sexual dimorphism of the brain is flat out pseudoscientific. Now there may be elements of the brain that are influenced in such a way, for example, those responsible for either sexuality or gender. But those elements being dimorphic does not then correlate to the brain as a whole being the same. That would be a fallacy of composition. The idea of pink brain and blue brain are nothing more than simplified expressions used to teach, say, the differences in gender identity to those who don't have an appreciation of the complexities of not just neuroscience but genetics and the environmental factors at play. But moving beyond that, we have the existence of intersex people. Now, if you don't know what an intersex person is, Mr. Warren, it's what science used to refer to as a hermaphrodite. That's an outdated term. Beyond clarification, it should not be used. These are people whose sexual characteristics, so their genitalia, chromosomes, internal reproductive organs, hormones, gametes, and the brain structure lean neither way. Now, the truth is, we are all like this to some degree. All men have some estrogen, all women have some testosterone, the clitoris is a lesser developed phallus, men and women both have breast tissue, which is why men can get breast cancer, but it's only the most extreme cases that are classified as intersex, and they account for about 2% of all live births. This is even though historically intersex children have been sterilized without their medical consent, a vile practice that is thankfully starting to be challenged in the West. And just a quick note here, not all species use the same method of sex determinism. Many reptiles such as crocodilians determine the sex of their offspring, not through chromosomes but through temperature, whilst other organisms have other means including the ability to change from one sex to another as they get older, such as the Asian sheephead wrasse which are all born female and become male as they reach a certain age and size. I just wanted to mention this because sex in the natural world is far messier than you are pretending. Here comes the second question for the atheist or the agnostic. Could this design and engineering have occurred by accident? And again, where's your evidence? While your question fallaciously presupposes there is design, an element you have not proven in this video in any sense of the term. 
So when you ask, where's my evidence? It's right here in your video in how you cannot found your questions on firm basis. You have to resort to assertion to pretend like you have ground, meaning that I don't have to lift a finger since your argument dies upon your failure to show any of what you have asserted to be true. When you have evidence for design or a god, then we can talk as currently this video is false advertising. A more accurate title would have been Assertions for the Atheist Claims About Nature by Rob Warren. I gotta say, not impressed. Hi there, I'd just like to say a few things here at the end of the video before you go. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone who's ever donated to the channel via Patreon, giving a special thanks to the following people. Hannah Banghart, Matthew Kovac, John Schoenrock, Daniel Martinez, and Alexander Williams. Your support has ensured this channel's ability to grow over the years. I'd also like to ask that you comment down below and like this video, as well as subscribe, hit the bell icon, and follow Essence of Thought on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please also consider following Atheist Alliance International on Facebook, a humanist organisation dedicated to helping atheists around the globe. Lastly, I'd like to request that you treat the people responded to in this video with a reasonable degree of respect. Whilst we understand that there are justifiable limits to said respect when tackling certain heavy topics and anger can be a genuine emotion in fighting injustice, any comments utilising language which insults others on the basis of perceived gender, sexuality, ethnicity or ability both mental and physical will be removed immediately and the commenter may be blocked on the moderator's discretion. Let's work to keep the space one which upholds the values of humanism. Thank you.